Okay, so today we're going to be talking about mixed radicals um, and converting them from the entire radical to the mixed radical and back. And I'm going to show you guys a couple examples and uh, then we're going to do um, I have one example with fractions as well. Okay, so I'm going to mainly show this one by example and I'll discuss it as we go along. Alright, so let's start with a um, simple radical like um, something like root 192. So root 192. Now it's important uh, to remember the different parts. This whole thing is called the radical. Okay, this symbol, this weird looks like a division symbol, is the radical symbol. And this part that's inside the symbol is called the radicand. Okay, so radicand. All right. Uh, so with root 192, as with all roots, um, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and use a factor tree uh, to solve this. Now if you happen to be able to list the roots of this, uh, then that's okay too. I'm going to show you two different methods, one with a factor tree and one with a factor table. Um, and we'll see where we can get uh, with each one. So with 192, it may not be readily apparent like how you might be able to factor this. So let's uh, Let's just start with a factor tree here. So we got 192, and that's 2 times 96. And 96 is 2 times 48. And 48 is 2 times 24. And 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. And 6 is 2 times 3. Now, as I said uh, in one of my earlier lessons, we can use a factor tree to find the square roots of uh, something by putting it into uh, two different groups. Now, in this one, we wouldn't be able to put the entire thing into two groups, but what we can do is we can see that there are three twos there, and there are three twos there, right? Or, alternately, we could group them as groups of two, so there's twos, twos, and twos. Okay, so what we could say is that root 192 is the same as saying the root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Yeah, that's kind of a long way of writing it. Um, then what we could do is we could shorten this though. And we could say that this is 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared times 3. Okay, so each one of these pairs making a squared. Okay, now as we know, the uh, square symbol and the square root symbol are well, basically op opposite operations. And so what we can do is we can use those to cancel each other out. So this would be essentially 2 times the root of 2 squared times 2 squared times 3 which is the same as saying, if we bring this 2 out, we get uh, we'll multiply it through, we got 4 times 2 squared times 3, and we multiply take this one out, and we'd end up with 8 root 3. Okay, and that's the reduction of this. Okay, and what we could find is that, uh, we could go back and check, and say that 8 uh, squared is equal to 64, and if we multiply this by 3, then we would get 192. Okay, now this also means, um, and normally this would be the answer that would be expected in a mathematics class, but um, the, sometimes what you, what you can do is you can also come up with a reduction that's not all the way down to the smallest form. Um, and technically it's still a mixed radical, but it's not usually the best way to present it. It's usually preferred if you can present it in, in its smallest form, uh, with the smallest prime number or the smallest number in the rad as a radicand. Okay, so let's uh, do another example, and this time I'm going to do it with a factor table instead of a factor tree. Um, in this one, uh, let's do the root of 80. Okay, so if I have the root of 80, and what I'm going to do with the root of 80 is I'm just going to list the factors of them. Okay, so I've got root of 80 is 1 times 80, and 2 times 40, and it's not divisible by 3, but it is by 4, so 4 times 20, and 5 times 16, 
it's not divisible by 6 or 7, but it is by 8, 8 by 10, and not divisible by 9, and so that's all the factors we have. Okay, now when we're using this technique, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the um, perfect square, or the greatest perfect square. Okay, so greatest perfect square. Okay, and so we have a few perfect squares here. We have um, 4 and 16, and technically 1 as well. But um, what we're looking for is the greatest one, and that's 16. Okay? So what we could say is that 80, root 80, is the same as saying 16 times 4. And when we do that, well, 16 times or 16 times 5. And when we say that, uh, what we can do is we can express 16 as a square, which is 4 squared times 5. Okay, And then what we can do is we can cancel out the square, or take this out, because the square root is the opposite of the square operation, and we end up with 4 root 5. Okay. I'm going to go and uh, do a fractional example now. Um, let's see, we're going to work with, um, let's see, root 18 over root 75. Now this is a, a common tactic of mathematics teachers, is to try and scare students, or not scare them, but freak them out with weird looking numbers. And often students will get kind of freaked out when they see a fraction, um, because they forget that it's just the same thing. They somehow think that it's the problem has become more complicated, but it really hasn't. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to keep working with this um, in the same way that we did before. Now, technically what you could do is use the division rule, and you could say that this is the root of 18 uh, divided by the root of 75. Okay, and that would be totally fine, and then you could work it out individually if you wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work out um, the numerator and denominator at the same time. Okay, so root 18 is the same as saying the root of 9 times 2 divided by the root of 75, which is 25 times 3. Now, I know there are other factors, but basically what I've done here is I've used the, uh, the greatest perfect square uh, technique that I just showed you uh, to find these numbers. Okay. So then what I have is this is equal to the root of 3 squared times 2 divided by the root of 5 squared times 3. Okay, now what I can do is I can say, well, this 3 uh, is a 3 squared, so I can cancel it, not cancel it, but pull it out. Okay, and I end up with 3 times the root of 2 over 5 squared times 3. Now this 5, I can do the same thing with, but remember, it's not a 5, it's a 1 fifth, okay, because it's in the denominator position here. And what that means is that when I pull it out, I also have to put in the denominator outside. Okay, so then this would be 3 fifths times the root of 2 thirds. Okay, and that's the answer. Okay, now just to do this, um, I'll do this the other way since I mentioned it as well, and you can see I get the same answer. Okay, so if I break this up, oops, okay, I'm going to get the root of 18 divided by the root of 75. Okay, the root of 18, as I said, is 9 times uh, 2, so root of 9 times 2 divided by the root of 25 times 3, which is the root of 3 squared times 2, all divided by the root of 5 squared times 3. Now, um, basically, you, can, you should be able to see that what's going to happen is the same thing. These squareds uh, will allow you to bring these terms out. So I got 3 root 2 on the top, uh, divided by 5 root 3. And I can keep this just like this if I want, or um, technically what most people prefer is for you to separate out the the different parts of the mixed radical, so you'd end up with 3 fifths as the outside term, and root 2 divided
multiplied it by root 3 on the, uh, as the radical. But um, going back from our division rule that we worked out earlier, this would be the same as 3 fifths of root 2 over uh, root 2 thirds. Okay, and that's the same answer as what we got before. Okay, finally, um, let's work out an example where we're going to go the other way around here. Uh, so we're going to start with the mixed radical and we're going to make it back into the entire radical. Okay, and this one I'm going to uh, make it a little bit trickier. Uh, what I'm going to use is a cube root. Okay, so I'm going to use um, 4 times the cube root of uh, 2. Alright, now before, uh, when we were working with just a square root, what I could have said is that, well, if this 4 had been inside the root earlier, it had to have been a 4 squared in order for me to bring it out and for, and for it to become a 4. Now, similarly, because this is a cube root, when I put the, the 4 back into the root or into the radical, it has to become a 4 cubed. So this 4 goes back in and would become a 4 cubed. Okay, so that would end up being 2 times 4 cubed, which is 64. And then we'd end up with um, the cube root of 128. Okay, so the cube root of 128 is the same as the cube saying 4 times the cube root of 2. Okay, and that's basically exactly how it goes. I'll show you one last example of this using a fraction. Uh, we'll go back to a square root, although it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's all the same stuff. Okay, so let's say I had 1 half times the root of 5. Now again, a lot of people aren't going to like this question because it has a fraction on, on it, but really it's the same thing. Okay, so in order for this to have been, um, to go underneath the radical, it had to have been a one-half squared. So what we can do is we can say, this is the same as saying five times one-half squared. Okay, and that just means that it is the root of five times one-half times one-half. Okay, and this just expresses as five over one. Okay, and then what we can do is just multiply all the denominators and all the numerators. So numerators across is 5 times 1 times 1, which is just 5. Denominators across the bottom are 1 times 2 times 2, which is 4. And so you'd have the root of 5 over 4. And that's really it. So you should see that making um, the in or trans transforming the mixed radical into the entire radical or the entire radical into the mixed radical is really just basically the same thing over and over again. Don't let the numbers confuse you. Um, once again, if you have questions, please drop me a line, send me an email, put a comment in the video, and I'll try and get back to you.